Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Today is Wednesday, March 22nd. Uh, in fact, uh, two days ago, it was equinox. In Korean, it's a chumbun. So the um, <clears throat> uh, daytime and nighttime are equal. So that's equinox. All right. So <clears throat> We're going to start today's mini seminar session. Today is one of the problem solving uh, sessions and uh, specifically how to handle clients' problem. Um, <clears throat> we, we're going to talk about about four different uh, situations. It's kind of a case, case study. Uh, the nature of this discussion would be a sort of case study. So let's take a look at the first one. The uh, <clears throat> first one, the problem was um, three days before the closing, suddenly the HOA informed that the seller had five outstanding violations. Oops. So it's kind of an emergency situation. The agent sprang into action. And we want to take a look at, we're going to discuss what the agent could done, uh, could have done. So uh, it's a can be typical situation, not a typical situation, but sometimes um, the homeowner didn't respond HOA violation notice. So before the closing, usually, as you know, the condo uh, usually um, the buyer's side, well, uh, incorporating with the seller side, uh, usually buyer uh, has to submit the uh, application for a resale certificate, we call. Uh, that means condo has to approve uh, this sale, okay? And uh, <clears throat> at the time, condo can review there is any violation notice to this unit, okay? And um, so uh, they had five outstanding violations and we have to close in three days. So how can we solve this situation? Well, first of all, <clears throat> the uh, three issues uh, were resolved by the contractor and handyman within agents network. So it is kind of important uh, the active agent should have the contractor and handyman network. Okay, some contractors, some uh, handymans at different levels. Contractor can handle a bigger project and the handyman can handle uh, smaller projects. So in other words, uh, the active agent should have good networking with uh, contractors and handymen. Okay. So they can sort of um, resolve the issues quickly. And he can call, the agent can call the contractor that he knows very well. And hey, this is emergency situation. Can you fix this problem next day? We got uh, three days to close. So anyway, this agent was uh, lucky to resolve three issues, but still two issues remained. And two issues cannot be done in three days period. So <clears throat> this is an idea we call uh, 30 days post-closing. Uh, you know, agents, we talk to the head of HOA and received 30 day post-closing to correct the issues. Meaning, okay, please let's close it, okay? But we're gonna give you agreement that next 30 days, after closing, we'll repair all the issues. Well, here, particularly three issues, outstanding issues. So this agent worked out with head of HOA. HOA is uh, Homeowners Associations. 
So you need to have you need to have some creative approaches and ideas. And the story is they could close this deal as planned. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I think one point uh, takeaway point is okay. It can be done. It can be negotiated with uh, HOA side uh, or um, condo management company side and work it out. Hey, we have to close, right? Uh, if we don't close, a lot of people are involved and uh, they are all down. Okay, so. Uh, they worked out and uh, received the 30-day post-closing to correct the uh, issues. That was kind of uh, open up the um, another avenue that we never thought about. Okay, the second situation is um, setting divorce uh, arrangement, uh, dis disagreements. Well, <clears throat> Yes, I had this experience personally before. The couple were in the process of divorcing and they have to sell the house. So usually they don't agree with many different things, but that's why they are divorcing. So even repair uh, uh, out of a home inspection, there are you know several repair lists. And this husband and wife, they are talking about different things. For instance, the husband said, forget about it. And the wife said, uh, no, 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 we have to repair this. So uh, they, could, they couldn't they uh, could kind of agree among themselves. But the, as an agent, you couldn't console one person more than the other. You know what? This is exactly kind of very sensitive dual agency case, okay? Well, dual agency in general, it sounds good because uh, almost double the um, commission, possibly, possibly, I said, because dual agency case has more um, tendency to be canceled because exactly the same situation. This divorcing couples, if this agent uh, console one person more than the other uh, side, they don't like each other because that's why they're divorcing right now. So uh, a few things we uh, kind of need to care for. Also, uh, I experienced um, uh, there were um, kind of a serious debate. Uh, the, uh, the, the sales proceeds where this money to go. Okay, the, the husband uh, approached to me, okay, I want this sales proceeds to my account, right? But as an agent, uh, we cannot do that because this, uh, uh, right now they are in divorcing, uh, still uh, th th there are two owners. So check has to be paid both names. That is um, the idea. So check payable to is husband and uh, wife's name. So that's that's a good idea always. And uh, also, instead of in-person closing, the remote closing is also recommended. Okay. And uh, maybe one side, the power of attorney would be a good idea. So they don't meet each other at the closing. Well, this day, anyway, we do a lot of remote closing. Seller, buyer, they don't meet each other. Well, seller and buyer, you know, some closing a very um, happy uh, mode, and they congratulate each other, okay, and then hand it over the key, okay, but not always. So these days, the remote closing is getting popular, seller and uh, buyer, they don't meet at the closing. So they do separately. Same thing, the divorce uh, situation it can be very subtle, okay? So you need to be very careful and um, uh, keep in mind the remote closing and power of attorney and um, check uh, has to be sales and uh, the net proceeds 
the proceeds means the uh, net uh, dollar amount, the money that the seller will get out of closing after uh, pay all the uh, closing uh, cost, including the uh, commission, of course. So make sure that net proceeds payable to both names, not just one party. Okay, next uh, case we want to talk about is uh, restoring the basement. The, before the, the listing of the property, a basement is flooded. A lot of uh, either case and uh, you know, much before uh, we have a sandy uh, case, etc. But in this case, fortunately, the seller, uh, their home insurance covered the lion's share of the cost, a major share of the uh, uh, the repair cost. That's, so it was a lucky case. But after that, what this agent uh, uh, did is the uh, <clears throat> sort of a key attitude or toward this kind of uh, basement flooding problem. But of course, removing the water and uh, elevating utilities, hiring sanitation company to check for mold. Um, the mold is one of the most fearful uh, situation for uh, most buyers. And uh, statistically, I think uh, uh, kind of um, Caucasian uh, white uh, family, they are very, very concerned about mold than the uh, Asian uh, buyers. But anyway, and the replacing windows even, and the freeing the bill for the sump pump installation post-closing. Same thing, uh, this also they, they deal with the post-closing, means after closing, they, they have a kind of separate agreement. Okay, after closing, Okay, or uh, we'll, I mean, after closing, we'll install the uh, sump pump for you. Okay, they write the agreement and then they can close or, or uh, footing the bill for sump pump kind of a credit, um, you know, sell, seller's credit. I mean, I'm sorry, seller's the, the credit to the buyer. Okay. And uh, the agent's strategy was full transparency. This is the key, full transparency. Not try to hide anything, but just the full transparencies. Okay, just explain what we did uh, for the uh, flooding situation in the basement. And also, this is interesting uh, approach. Uh, I never thought, but arranging for the remediation company to be on standby to answer questions for prospective buyers. Well, I guess either you pay just uh, some money or uh, as, a, as a favor uh, because they pay the money to uh, remediation companies, right? So uh, as a favor or it's just pay the job, but anyway, arranging the uh, remediation company personnel to be at the site, okay, and stand by to uh, answer any questions for uh, prospect buyers. That's, I think, very, well, <clears throat> it's a very good approach I never thought about, but uh, see, if you are serious about selling property, okay, if you are serious about taking care of other uh, people's property, uh, you may do so. And um, for prospective buyer's point of view, that's very comforting. Okay? If someone uh, expert, okay, and standing by to answer any questions, that's, that's a great gesture, uh, I think. And anyway, the seller received the full price offer at 1.595 million. So that is why the uh, usually basement flooding is really a um, uh, big minus for the property, right? As kind of we know, but in this case, okay, it didn't make any dent uh, to the um, receiving the full price offer. So a lot of creative ideas. If you go extra mile, you can get uh, really extra um, 
uh, benefit benefit in this case is your your commission so always uh, what i'm saying is um excellent service to the client will guarantee maximum profit for you so um excellent service excellent service doesn't limit you know there's no limit so this kind of ideas you you gain the trust okay you gain um, reliability and the royalty, everything. Okay, once you earn that royalty from your client, whoever is it, the buyer side or seller side, and you can imagine the next project, it's very easy to get the listing or, or very easy to spread the word mouth to mouth. So, key thing is excellent service and the earning trust. Okay, small things. Uh, it can uh, return the big favor. Okay, then the last one is dealing with the low appraisal. This is also um, not that many, but it can be a uh, fairly good uh, chance of cases. Okay, appraisal price can lower than uh, agree uh, sales price. So this case appraisal came in um, $39, sorry, $39,000 below the property's agreed open sale price. Well, about $40,000 lower. Well, that can be difficult. The severe case we have seen, uh, for instance, last year, home price uh, going up crazy. We, we have seen even $100,000 difference, the lower than a real price. But anyway, $30,000, not bad. So, but now agent realized that appraiser didn't give any value for 900 square feet backyard. Okay, this particular area, the backyard was very important. And uh, agent uh, thought that can be valued about $50,000, okay? But also agent could find lots of better comps. When we deal with appraisal, the compatibles is very important, right? And sometimes we are waiting, the appraiser is waiting for the next door's closing because next to, if next door closed, then it becomes official comps, official comparables. And uh, that house was sold very high, for instance. Okay, that becomes very good comparables. We call comps. So then your uh, the subjective house appraiser can be different. Okay. So anyway, agent could find a lot of uh, better comps. Well, <clears throat> appraiser is also a human being. So either they uh, can be lazy and they can be um, not experienced, you know, so many things, okay? So uh, agent really worked hard how to correct this situation. So instead of requesting appraiser to reevaluate it, usually appraiser hates to do a re-evaluation. Uh, uh, because you know it's a professional they we we as a professional we really hate to kind of a flipped uh, my opinion or my number right as as you experience so agent asked uh, the, the different appraisal so second appraisal by different appraisal and but that was risky risky also because the bank said okay if you wanted the second appraisal, we'll do that. But no matter what, we're going to stick to second appraisal in any case. It was a risky, but Asian is kind of, uh, again, uh, <clears throat> went uh, extra mile. So after doing hours of research, the agent presented to the appraiser what he felt were compatible properties. So in other words, uh, the agent uh, by uh, her or himself uh, searched a lot of um, comps, okay, and then provide that. Anyway, the result was 
$3,000 more than the uh, contract price. And that was uh, good. So again, the agent worked hard. Well, <clears throat> if you are not that experienced agent and, and in that matter, uh, buyer, if you are the buyer, uh, you just got stuck. Okay, how are we going to do this? Uh, only thing you might think of is just to uh, ask lowering the sales price, but seller doesn't like it. And then deal can be broke. Okay, sometimes you, we experience that. Okay, actually, um, deal is canceled. If they don't agree, it's appraisal price. That's why... Uh, we even called appraisal contingency. Okay, so in this situation, what we're going to do, um, we can put um, on the contract, we can put appraisal contingency. If this happens, what we're going to do? I mean, you can agree from the beginning. Okay, but uh, this is unexpected situation. So agent... Um, when uh, extra mile. So a lot of creative ideas we need to serve client. Again, excellent service guarantees maximum profit for you. Okay. 그 이번 주에는 한네 가지 정도 어, 그 실질적으로 있을 수 있는 문제 그리고 에이전트들이 어떻게 손님들을 더 도울 수 있는가 아, 그런 거네 가지 어, 좀 살펴보는데요. 이 케이스들은 지금 그 리얼터 매거진, 그러니까 NAR에서 내는 리얼터 매거진 윈터 버전에 있었던 것을 여러분들한테 지금 소개해드리고 있거든요. 어, 지금 클로징이 3일 남았어요. 첫 번째 케이스는 3일 남았는데 어, 그 간도의 허가를 맡아야 되는 거 아시죠? 간도를 어, 매매할 때는 그래서 리세일 서티피케이션이라고 그러는데 그때 뭐 다큐멘트를 많이 또 내야 되고요. 그 간도에서 오케이를 해야 되는데 갑자기 3일 전에 칸도에서 이 유닛이 어, outstanding 그 아직 해결이 안된 뭐예요? violation이 다섯 개나 있다. 난리가 난 거죠, 그죠? 그래서 어떻게 좀 에이전트가 이제 뛰기 시작한 거야. 이때 에이전트의 순발력이 필요하죠. 어, 저는 항상 우리 에이전트분들한테 얘기하는데. 이 리얼 에스테이트 트랜잭션이 굉장히 슬로우한 트랜잭션이긴 해요. 그런데 상황이 떨어지면 007보다도 더 빨리 움직여야 된다. 007 에이전트보다도 어, 더 빨리 움직여야 된다라고 늘 얘기를 하는데 이때가 바로 그때 그 에이전트가 이제 액션에 들어가는 거죠. 그래서 막그 컨트랙터 핸드맨 막 전화하는 그 자기가 잘 쓰고 있는 그런 네트워크가 좀 필요하죠. 그래서 두, 세 개는 어떻게, 그 다음날 해결했어요. 근데 두 개는 도저히 해결이 안 돼. 요 때에 에이전트가, 어, 그, HOA 쪽, 뭐, 프레지던트를 안다든지 아니면, 어, 그, 매니지먼 컴퍼니를 연락을 해서 사정을 얘기를 잘한 거야. 그래서 뭘 허가받았냐면, 30-day post closing to correct the issues. 클로징 일단 하자. 클로징을 못하면 많은 사람들이 엄청 피해간다. 뭐 칸도에서도 만약에 자기네 때문에 브레이크를 한다면 굉장히 미안하겠죠. 아, 그래서 30-day post-closing 어, 그, 그 허가를 얻어냈어요. 자, 그런 것들이 좀, 어, 좀 아이디어를 낼 필요가 있다는 거고요. 자, 그 다음에 이제 디보싱 케이스에 조심해야 될 게, 이 디보싱 케이스는요, 어, 뭐, 셀러 쪽에, 예를 들어서 집을 파는 쪽이라면은, 그 사람들 자체가 의견이 달라서 지금 이혼을 하기 때문에 집 파는 것도 문제가 많아요. 인스펙션 리스트를 이제 바이어가 쭉 인스펙션에서 왔는데 그거를 고쳐주자 말자의 의견이 갈라지나. 그러니까 상당히 이제 어렵죠. 이게 뭐 배가 막 산으로 갈 수도 있고 뭐 그렇기 때문에 마치 두얼 레이전트 같은 상황이 될수 있어요. 어떤 남편을 더 두둔할 수도 없고 와이프를 저거할 수도 없고 중간에서 아주 곤란해 그런 상황이 될 때에 이제 그리고 또 저도 한번 경험했는데 남편이 어프로치를 하더니 그 셀러 그돈 가져가는 거 그거에 그걸 레어카운트로 넣어달라는 거야 
음, 그건 좀 곤란하잖아요. 그죠? 한 사람. 그래서 체크를 앤드로 해서 두 사람 이름을 쓰는 게 좋겠고요. 물론 변호사하고 상의하겠지만, 그 다음 리모트 클로징이 상당히 좋겠다. 때로는 한 사람 쪽은 파워, 파워로 버튼 이를 내가 얻어서, 에이전트를 얻어서 서로 만나지 않도록 클로징을 처리하는 게 좋겠다. 뭐 그런 아이디어가 있었고요. 그 다음에, 베이스먼이 굉장히 골치 아프죠. 어, 베이스먼 한번 플러드 됐다 그러면 그걸 어떻게 속이려고 하는 시, 심리가 있죠. 그렇죠? 어, 없었던 것으로 어, 하려고 하는 심리가 작용하게 되는데 이 케이스는 뭐 럭키 케이스긴 해요. 보험에서 다 커버가 됐고 또 물도 다 빼고 유틸리티도 막다 들어 올려서 어, 그 다음에 이제 그 몰드 처리해 주는 회사 있죠. 세니테이션 컴퍼니들 불러서 그 다음에 문까지도 다 바꿨다 그래요. 그리고 썸 펌프를, 어, 이제 놔주겠다는 이제 크레딧까지도 다 이제 이렇게 다 해놓고, 어, 그래서, 어, 이제 에이전트의 그 어떤 이제 전략은 뭐였냐 하면은 이거 무조건 풀 트랜스페런시로 가자. 그렇죠. 아무것도 하이딩 하려고 하지 말자. 그리고 한 가지 이게 이제, 그 굉장히 그좀 튀는 아이디어인데, 그 세니테이션 컴퍼니, 그 몰드 처리하고 한 전체 공사를 한 컴퍼니의 사람을 나오게 해가지고 바이어들이 와서 질문할 때에 답변을 해주겠다. 왜 우리가 다 이렇게 이렇게 해서 안전하게 했다 하는 것을. 어, 그거는 굉장히 좀 어, 생각해보지 못했던 신선한 아이디어 같아요. 물론 어려움이 따를 수는 있겠죠. 뭐그 사람들이 왜 나오냐 뭐 어쩌죠. 그러나 어레인지 할수 있다면 바이어들로서는 굉장히 어, 믿음이 가죠. 결국은 이 셀러는 어, 1.6 밀리언의 어퍼를 받았다. 어, 그래서 어, 에이전트들하고 어, 우리 손님들하고는 같은 팀이 돼서 그 굉장히 그좀 아이디어를 이렇게 많이 어, 내놓는 게 중요하다. 그 다음에 이건 이제 로 어프레이저리 낮게 나왔을 때에 어프레이저리 낮게 나왔을 때 어떻게 하느냐? 좀 고민스럽죠. 바이어가 먼저 하려고 하는 건 무조건 집값을 깎으려고 그러죠. 그래서 셀러는 또 굉장히 싫어하죠. 자, 그랬을 때그 에이전트로서 이제, 어, 일을 한 거야. 우리는 어프레이저는 아니에요. 그러나 어프레이저 하는 방법은 다 배웠어요. 어, 기, 기본적인 것은 컴페어 하는 것 뿐이에요. 부동산은 무슨 큰 재주가 없어요. 코스트 어널리시스도 있고, 어, <웃음> 그 다음에 인컴 어프로치도 있지만은 레지덴셜의 경우는 인컴 어프로치는 잘 쓰기 힘드니까 어, 컴페러블, 컴페어 하는 것이 가장 큰, 어, 가장 릴라이어블한 방법인데 이때 에이전트가 막 찾은 거예요. 컴페러블. 아무리 봐도 좀 이상해요. 3만 9천 불이 낮게 나왔다는 게. 그래서 더 좋은 컴프를 찾아냈고 어, 그리고 이 어프레이저가 보니까 뒤에 백야드가 꽤 있는데 그걸 어, 컨스터 하지 않은 것 같다. 하여튼 그래서 결국은 세컨 어프레이저를 요구했어요. 물론 어프레이저한테 다시 점검해달라 리벨류에이션을 요청할 수도 있지만 그러면 굉장히 어프레이저들은 기분이 상하죠. 그래서 아예 다른 어프레이저를 요청했어요. 요청했더니 은행에서는 좋다 그걸 들어주겠는데 그러나 무조건 세컨의 한 어프레이저를 밸류로 간다 그러더라는 거예요. 그래서 이제 더 많이 일을 해서 컴프를 많이 제공해 줬어요, 어프레이저한테. 어프레이저도 자기가 컴프가 있다면, why not? 그쵸? 자기도, 어, 또 블레임 당하기 싫고 하겠죠. 그리고 딜을 자기 어프레이저 때문에 깨진 것이 그렇게 뭐 바람직한 거는 아니겠죠. 그러니까 협조적이에요. 그래서 어프레이저들이 나갔을 때, 유령 있는 에이전트들은 같이 나가요. 같이 나가서 그저 말 한마디도 해주고, 왜? 어프레이저도 사람이기 때문에. 어, 친절하게 해주고 그 다음에 어, 이 업젝티브한 데이터를 주는 거죠. 네. 어떤 때는 에이전트 어, 어프레이저들이 물어봐요. 너 좋은 컴프 있냐고. 네. 자기도 개인적인 의견을 드리지 않고 컴프에 따라서 어, 이제 이벨레이션을 하고 싶으니까. 자 그래서 그런 좀 어, 엑스트라 마일을 더 뛰면 우리가 어, 일들을 어, 클라이언트 문제들을 어, 많이 해결할 수가 있겠다. Okay, so this is it. Um, today we talked about um, four different uh, problems and um, solving the problems. 
by the way, this is um, <clears throat> extracted from the, um, the Realtor magazine, uh, winter version. So if you have this uh, magazine, you can take a look at it as well. Thank you for joining. See you all next week.